two years ago, I got myself this Silver Sky and I absolutely fell in love with it. But there are five things that were very surprising to me about this guitar and I'm here to share them with you today. First, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, it helps me more than you know. All right, let's get to surprise number one. Surprise number one for me was the fret size on this neck. These are small frets. Very small. If you're used to those big Gibson frets, when you pick this up, you're gonna be like, where are they? I can barely see them. That's not something that really mattered that much to me. I have guitars with all different fret wire sizes on them, and I honestly don't have a preference overall. It really depends on the guitar as to whether or not it works in context of the whole thing. And I can tell you for me, these frets work great on this neck, on this guitar. I know it might be a problem for some of you, but for me, they work. But I was surprised at how small they were. So that is just something to be aware of if you've never played one of these or you're thinking about buying a Silver Sky. Fret size is probably gonna be something that's a little bit different than what you're used to, unless you've been playing vintage Fenders and things like that, then obviously this is not going to be a big surprise to you. Surprise number two is the fretboard radius controversy does not matter. I know that a seven and a quarter inch radius is difficult when it comes to setting up a guitar, but when it comes to playing this guitar, I have no issues with notes fretting out. I have no issues with feel. It feels natural. It feels great to me. I mean, when you look at it, you can see that radius. It's more extreme, absolutely. But I, it's just not as big of a deal as I think was made of it when this guitar first came out. People were just up in arms over the fretboard radius. And John Mayer himself said that he didn't necessarily pick it based on the spec, but he just picked it based on the feel. And the feel to him, blind test, I guess, was just that, hey, this is the radius that works. Now, I am definitely not a radius connoisseur, but I was kind of bracing myself to not like this because of all of the discussion online about the fretboard radius. And I'm here to tell you that it really doesn't matter. For me, this is just a very comfortable, pleasing guitar to play. I don't really care what the radius measures. I'm sure my guitar tech does because it's, it's just more difficult to set these things up and make sure they play the right way. But, um, you know, from a user perspective, I think it's great. Again, same with the fret wire. In conjunction with the whole thing, it just works. Surprise number three was actually something very pleasant that I was not expecting to care that much about. And that is the shape of this heel on the body. It is rounded, as you can see. And you know that on strats, traditionally, it's a very hard edge where the neck meets the body. Now, I didn't think that it would matter that much, but I can tell you, after playing this guitar, when you go back to a Strat and you hit those upper frets, for me at least, I really, really notice that this is rounded and I really, really notice that on a traditional Strat, it is not. Now Fender has started to cut a little bit of wood out of one side of that in some of the more modern versions of the guitars, but if you're looking at like a 50s reissue or something from Fender, it's gonna have that squared off point on the heel and my hand hits it and it's not a deal breaker, but this is definitely more comfortable and this is definitely an improvement over that original design. So surprise number four, I actually thought there was something wrong with my particular guitar and that's because the volume knob and tone knob pots are very loose, at least compared to what I'm used to on other Strat style guitars. When I started to actually turn the knobs when I first took this out of the case, I was like, whoa, wait a minute, something's up here, something's not right, this thing has been heavily used or there's just something going on. When I did a little bit more research, it seems to be a characteristic that all of these guitars have and I've actually come to not mind it. Once you get used to that lack of resistance on the knob, it works. I mean, I'm not a real big volume swell player, but if you are, I could see how this might be a little bit easier to control, although, depending on how you do it, you might want some of that extra resistance. You can add some resistance to pots, um, not electrical resistance, but actual physical resistance. To me, it's something I got used to very quickly, but it was surprising. I pulled it out of the case and I immediately noticed a difference there. All right, surprise number five, I thought was just hype. I watched all of the John Mayer promotional videos, all the Paul Reed Smith promotional videos, and they talked about how great 
the bridge pickup is and how great also the middle pickup is. And I have to tell you that it is not hype. Those pickups, actually all the pickups sound great. But you expect positions two, four, five to sound great on a Strat style guitar. A lot of us, depending on the type of music you play, we really skip over the middle pickup alone and we tend to skip over the bridge pickup alone too. But on this guitar, those pickup positions are very usable, they are really good, and to be honest with you, surprise number 5.1 or 5A is how good the middle pickup is on this guitar. I have never found myself playing on the middle pickup on a Strat, and on this guitar, I actually use that pickup quite a bit. It provides a really cool, unique sound. I dig it, it's really, really nice, um, and I don't think that it was just hyperbole or hype on Paul Reed Smith's part or John Mayer's part to say that the pickups on this guitar are actually something very special. So here's a bonus surprise for you. This guitar is expensive and it does not come with a hard shell case. It comes with a gig bag, but John Mayer has a history of making really cool cases and carrying cases with other companies, and it is no different with the case that comes with the Silver Sky. Now, Paul Reed Smith does make some really nice gig bags, but I think they upped it a little bit for the one that comes with the Silver Sky. I've actually really enjoyed having a soft case for this guitar. It's got backpack straps, it's got a really well thought out compartment on the front and on the back, and I have done gigs where I just throw everything in this case to include a little amp sim pedal, all my cables, uh, everything you could possibly need. I walk right in and I'm good to go. So that's not the same thing with a hard case. Hard cases tend to get very heavy. Yes, they provide better protection. So on the one hand, this bonus surprise is kind of two surprises. One, I was surprised that it came with a soft case, but two, I was surprised at how good that gig bag soft case actually is. So if you're someone who's saying, why do I want to pay $2,500 for a Strat copy from Paul Reed Smith, or you really, really want this guitar, but you're like, no, nah, man, I really think I should be getting a hard case. I can tell you that soft case is gonna get you through 95% of situations. I mean, if you're flying with it and you need to check the guitar, then yeah, you probably don't wanna just check it in a soft case, but that goes for any soft case. So those are my most surprising things about this guitar. And you know, most of them are really positive. I didn't have very many negative surprises thrown my way when I picked one of these up. So um, highly recommend it, I love it. I uh, admittedly, the first time I played a Silver Sky, I wasn't really in love with it, but then a couple years went by and I got my hands on this one and it was just, I, I knew I, had found a guitar that was gonna be in my collection for a long time, if not forever. So if you own a Silver Sky, I would love to know what your five surprises were, negative or positive. Um, maybe if you don't own one, or if you have an SE model, same thing. I'd just be curious to know what your thoughts are. So if you've made it this far in the video, I sincerely appreciate it. Again, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit the like button, leave a comment. It helps me more than you know. And if you're not done, scrolling through your phone or hanging out on your smart TV or computer, I suggest that you continue on my channel and check out these videos right over here.